Hello, this is Paydirt TV and I'm Dominic Piper. Today I'm joined by Akapi Resources Limited Executive Director, Andrew Shearer. Andrew, thanks for joining us. No, thank you, Dominic. Thanks for your time this morning. Much appreciated. Andrew, you've uh, made a big move this week. You've, you've completed uh, due diligence on the Enmore Gold Project in New South Wales, and it looks like you're going to proceed ahead uh, with the acquisition of the project. Can you, can you tell me how did this deal come about? Look, thanks, um, thanks, Dominic. Look, the deal came about through relation, long-term relationships that uh, we have with uh, a well-known prospector called Tom Burrows here in Melbourne. And uh, Tom's had this project for 27 years and has been doing a fair bit, done a fair bit of work on it over over the years. But uh, introduced it to us and was uh, we're able to have a look and say that whilst Tom's done some good work, there's still quite a quite a few gaps and quite a few opportunities for us to get in there and do some more work. And it's a good value add for Okapi as Okapi makes its transition from a DRC focused gold company to more of a domestic focused company. Um, it provides walk up drill targets um, that we still need to get the orientation on, but it it's, has over 200 drill holes on the project and provides Okapi with a lot of good potential. And it, it's a good logical step in Okapi's strategy of building a portfolio of projects. You mentioned the walk-up drill targets. Is, is is that one of the main attractions of of Enmore that you can you can get your teeth straight into exploration there? Absolutely. Um, it, look, it complements the Mount Day project that we've recently acquired in in Western Australia, which is more of a greenfields exploration project. With the Enmore project in the New England fold belt of New South Wales, it's got thirty nine uh, historic occurrences and targets on the project. And as I said, there's been a lot of a lot of airborne geophysics. There's been a lot of drilling. There's been a fair bit of mapping done, um, but still opportunities. And one of those we're targeting straight up is a project called Sunnyside. Sunnyside, for example, has over 100 drill holes on it, but most of those are in the depth of around about 20 to 30 meters. There's only a few drill holes that have gone below around about 40 meters, and some of those have returned good grades of mineralization, gold mineralization. What we found though is that in our DD, they have been largely vertical holes and a lot of the structures that we're targeting under the oxide are vertical. So therefore, the opportunity for us is to come in and do some more detail, whether it be structural geology or whether it be electrical geophysics, get the orientation of those structures and then better design our drill holes to come in under that known mineralization and, and test those targets. So that'll be the first step. We've already started on Starting on the uh, approval process, we're um, working through that at the moment. You, you mentioned targeting that deeper mineralisation. We, we often see in New South Wales exploration targets and discovery projects. I'm thinking uh, the border discovery recently by Alcane Resources, a big, low-grade systems, often porphyry systems. Is that what you're chasing here, or is it a different style of mineralisation you're looking at? Oh, very much so. It's a very... It is a, a different style of mineralization from the majority of the news flow that we've been seeing out of New South Wales exploration, as you mentioned, has been those larger porphyry targets. This is in a different geological domain. Um, it is more what we term structurally controlled, high grade structurally controlled gold. Um, what we've been encouraged by also is looking at the recent positive news that's been put out by Red by our, our peer company Red River Resources. On the uh, listed on the ASX, they've got a, the Hillgrove Gold Antony Mine, which is located probably as the crow flies about 35 kilometres north of the Enmore project. And looking at some of their good work that they've been doing, and they're, what they're finding is that the gold mineralization, a lot of the high grade mineralization is associated with a northwest cross cutting structure. At Enmore, the, um, there is a dominant east west structure that has been the focus because it's largely outcropping. What hasn't been the focus is, and we can see it in the, geo, in the, in the airborne magnetics, is there is these north same orientation structures at Hillgrove that we're seeing at Enmore that haven't been adequately tested yet. So that's given us hope, or no, that, that's given us the impetus to, to adopt a new model, a new idea, and learn off the analogies that, um, that Hillgrove 
or Red River have been reporting. So what is the plan from here then? You mentioned that you'd probably do some geophysics uh, early this year. Will, will uh, the geophysics start in the next couple of months and then when will you get ready to start drilling? Look, the, absolutely, we want to hit the ground running and go as quickly as possible under the terms of the farming agreement or the acquisition agreement. We have a, a minimum spend of $200,000, which in, encompasses 1,000 metres of drilling. We would like to get on the ground as quickly as possible. Um, as I said, we've started discussions with drilling companies to see on their availability. Uh, it, the, the timing really will come down to the permitting from the New South Wales government um, to get there and get on the ground. And also we've got to be cognizant of some of the current border shutdowns, but we would really like to be in there as soon as possible. Um, and if that be around about March, April, that'd be a really good outcome. Andrew, as you mentioned earlier, uh, as well as, as MR in New South Wales, you've you're, you're switched to a domestic focus as seen you pick up the Mount Air project in here in Western Australia in the Forestania belt. What's the opportunity there? Look, there's a good opportunity there. What it provides for a, a carpet is a low cost entry into a project that has previously been looked at for other commodities other than gold. There's been a little bit of work for gold. We'll identify a good continuous soil anomaly there um, with limited drilling. The drilling that has been undertaken there has been allocated on outcropping historic material. Um, and the opportunity is to that come in underneath the uh, the geochem anomaly and do some more work there. It's a we've entered into a, a joint venture arrangement with Lithium Australia on that on one of those tenements there. We've also applied for our own project there, our own tenement of butting it. What has slowed down with the COVID was the permitting and approval process in Western Australia, and that has slowed us down a little bit with getting on the ground. We have done some geochem. We're just waiting to get those results or collate those results and also get the uh, ELA granted at the same time. But it certainly provides us with the first step in our strategy of developing a portfolio of projects with early stage Greenfield One and more provides us more with a pseudo semi almost brownfields exploration project. And we're still looking to complement both of those projects with another, another asset as well. But in that hunt for new projects, are you finding many opportunities around and what commodities or, or style of project are you looking at? Fairly open mandate in terms of what sort of commodities we're looking for, base and precious metals, um, more domestic focus, obviously some within the, the bounds of Okapi. We've got a, a we've just completed a capital raising. Um, when that's finished, the second tranche of that, that'll be a 2.5 million raise. Whereas of the last quarter we had 1.3 in the bank. So we've got a fairly we'll have a fairly healthy bank balance. Market cap is around about it will be around about 15 million um, at that stage. So we're well positioned. Obviously, the size of the project would be can be in line with both our, our bank balance and our market cap. But as I said, broad range of commodities um, are seeing a lot of assets out there. But what we're seeing is a lot of assets with a very high price tag as well. And so we're being a little bit more discerning and looking for assets that add value without necessarily degrading the value of current shareholders of Okapi. Andrew, well, congratulations on the acquisition of MR and uh, we look forward to seeing some of those early results, both in the geophysics and, and some drilling. Thanks for joining us today. All right, thanks, Simon. Thanks for your time.